Hey everybody, welcome back to another spooky video here on the channel. It's been a while since I've done anything Halloween themed, so excuse the lateness. I wanted to bring the conversation back to Junji Ito. Now, there is a twist to this video. Unfortunately, I can't show you the full contents of the book. I've been made aware that the uh, copyright owners and the publishers and all that stuff are very vigilant when it comes to the Ito IP, the license and all that stuff. So I'm kind of forced to not show a lot. Instead, I'm just going to show you the chapter pages and I'll briefly talk about the book, what it's about, and my thoughts on them. I wish it wouldn't have to be this way, but it is what it is. Let's get started with the first book. First book on the list here is The Liminal Zone. This is pretty interesting. It came out back in 2020 in the midst of the global pandemic for COVID. This was not published physically. Instead, it was done through the Line Manga app, if memory serves me right, and it's four short stories. There is a volume two, which I have not read, and it is coming out soon, I believe March of next year, 2025, so I am looking forward to that. But for this first volume here, uh, the four chapters are long, than your standard manga chapter. Usually they only have 32 pages to work with, so Ito did mention that this allowed him to be a little bit more creative and flesh out the stories the way he would have wanted. The first story is called Weeping Woman Way, and it tells the story of this couple that take a detour on their vacation and happen to stumble upon this village. There's a funeral and in attendance is a professional mourner. This grieving lady is crying nonstop and it affects the main protagonist of the story. Taken aback by the grief and powerful emotion of sadness and fear, she can't get that idea of weeping out of her head and actually becomes sad and starts crying as a result. The couple are said to marry but they take a break to sort of find out why she has been struck by grief so intensely and why she can't stop feeling the sadness and and of course stopping the tears so they go back to the town where this happened but they can't find anything nobody knows uh, eventually they stumble upon this foggy road which leads into a I guess mysterious town that's off the books and in here we see that the village is filled with weeping women and they sort of have this mission of mourning all of the souls that have passed in a universal matter, not just a specific person in Japan, but just the overall collective of the human souls. And as the main couple investigates, they start to realize that there's more to just feeling that overall sadness. So what did I think? This is a very unusual story. It's way out of the norm. I don't think I would have ever conceived a horror story story being spun out of a weeping lady that's very unusual but also very on brand for someone like Junji Ito. This story mostly plays around with the theme of grief and how we cope with it. Obviously on a more exaggerated note you have the main opposition force in this story saying like oh this legendary figure that founded our town, she wept for everyone and helped souls to rest in peace. So we need a successor. We need a weeping woman. And that's what they find in Mako, the main protagonist of the story. So yeah, pretty interesting, pretty uh, niche and a uh, fun idea to explore. A different sort of horror, if you will. The main attraction here is definitely the art. This is Ito after so many decades of experience of drawing characters and just uh, creating masterful stories left and right now you can just sort of sit back flex and uh, create these unique tales and it is reflected on the character designs which I think are some of the richest in the bibliography of Ito. The next story is Madonna. This is about this private, I assume Catholic inspired school where they have this sort of secret sect inside and it's based off the Virgin Mary. Now, I do want to point out that this is a very nonsensical, exaggerated spin on this tale. And what's cool about it is that if this were the 70s, this Madonna story would have been a phenomenal uh, non-sploitation movie movie of that era. Just the overall dreadful presence of taking something that's supposed to be holy and good and for the betterment of people's souls, twisting it into something dirty, nasty, horrific, vile. 
in here you have this leader that claims that his wife is uh, sort of the reincarnation of the Virgin Mary and how all the female students have to live by the creed and behave according to the school's norms and all that stuff. But it's a very sick and twisted way to manipulate students into thinking something when this is just a man that had infidelity issues is super vengeful and wants to consummate with the perfect individual to, in their eyes, bring about the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is just crazy to think about. So we do follow a young girl that is new to the school and she's sort of learning about the practices involved and of course slowly but surely uh, taking note of all the creepy stuff that's happening and the wife of the head of the school and how she claims to be a Madonna virgin but she couldn't be further from it, more horrific and demonic instead. Obviously the art is just as good as the previous story, especially here where you have more bloody scenes inspired by the church and stuff like that. It looks really cool though. The next one took me by surprise. This is the spirit flow of Aokigahara, also known as the suicide forest in Japan. I thought this was going to be more horrific because of the nature of the forest, but it kind of became sort of this goofy story about this couple that uh, wants to end it all. So they go into the forest, but they find in in the midst of it all, sort of this giant wave of energy that is passing through one night and they don't know what it is. They are so shocked, scared and surprised. So they follow it and they find at the end of the trail, this uh, mysterious cave that's called like the dragon's head or something like that. And there's like uh, urban legends and myths about this cave and like how it's based on a real dragon and how the spirits flow out of it into the night. and at the end of the day, they come back sort of like a river passing through. So curious about this, the protagonist of the story decides to hold off on ending his life and wants to investigate the spirit flow. His partner is not having it and is scared of what is happening, but she is convinced because of her devotion and love to stay with this guy. So when the spirit flow happens and it shows up, he ends up joining it, jumping in, and he is altered. He is shaped differently. He is transformed into, I guess, a sort of this alien looking creature, like a gray from alien stories and folklore. And the more that he is exposed to the spirit flow, the more it alters his psyche and persona. And at some point during the story, it just becomes a little bit too comical with how much he's changed and his interactions with uh, the people around him. It ends on a somewhat of a funny note, not really that scary, which is not what I was expecting, but I dug it overall. The final story here is probably my least favorite. It is called Slumber, and I feel like if you wanted to, you could adapt this into a live action movie in Japan and in Hollywood, and it would do really well. It's about uh, this young man who thinks that when he's going to sleep, he's waking up and committing serial murders and sort of the paranoia that grows out of it. The police are close to catching him. He is convinced that he's doing it. His friend doesn't think he's a killer. so. They try and set things up to see if he's actually doing these things. I'm not going to reveal what happens, but the ending was what I expected. I'm typically not a fan of the slashers and killers when it comes to horror. That's really not my thing. I prefer more the, the creatures and supernatural stuff. But uh, overall, if you're a fan of true crime, detective work, and serial killers, I think you'll be right at home with slumber. The art is crazy good, especially with the facial expressions on this one. Pay close attention to how these characters behave and contort their faces to what's happening. I thought that was really good. The next book on the list here is Black Paradox, a sci-fi horror story. And I was pleasantly surprised by this. We follow a group of four individuals who meet up after talking online at a weird website to attempt a group suicide. But before they kill themselves, they discover something very bizarre. Without spoiling too much of the story, we follow the characters of Maruso, a nurse, Taburo, a man who is tortured by his doppelganger, Barachi, a woman agonizing over a birthmark on her face, and Pitan, 
an engineer who has his own robot. Yeah, in this version of the world, we are advanced enough to construct a fully functioning humanoid robot which is based on the likeness of this character called Piton. When the group attempts to do the suicide, the only one that is somewhat successful is Piton, but he does survive the encounter, he does come back to the world of the living. In that moment where he tried to off himself, he spots what seems to be like an alternate dimension or another realm where everything is dazzling, it's gleaming with pure light, and you might think this is the afterlife. Now, curiosity gets the better of him, and when he wakes up, he vomits this perfectly spherical gem that is unknown. It is labeled as a brand new mineral and it has this amazing bright light to it as well as a powerful emission of energy. The characters suddenly realize, hey, this is something special. We can probably monetize it and create something for the betterment of society or make ourselves filthy rich. Perplexed at the mystery of these stones, most of the main cast of this book realizes, like I mentioned, that they can make a profit out of this. But the one character that is somewhat against everything is Maruso. This is a girl that has visions of the future and with this new stone, she realizes that it may not be the saving grace that everybody's excited for. As more and more people eventually learn about the mysterious gemstones and the danger that they might pose for humanity as well as the benefits, we get a more dystopian version of scientists wanting to harness unknown power in the sake of progress, fame, fortunes, and more. There are hints that these stones are somewhat linked to human souls, so we could be looking at this story through a sci-fi lens of the African Afterlife and how we can harness that infinite energy, but at the cost of our own security and well-being. It's a simple story in scope, but with large implications when you reach the final page. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was an excellent use of sci-fi tropes with Ito's classic horror to sort of give us an alternate take on the future of humanity and our desire to improve the well-being of our species without taking into consideration the ramifications of harnessing strange and powerful energies. I thought the art was great in Black Paradox. It's very nice, detailed, grotesque at times, especially when it deals with the character of Piton and getting these stones out of his stomach. Because, yeah, slight spoilers, I guess it expanded his stomach and created a rift, a portal into this other world, which would make sense connecting the soul and afterlife aspect to the human body and how we're all linked together. The final book that we're going to talk about here is Mimi's Tales of Terror. This one follows a university student called Mimi with her boyfriend Naoto. And throughout the book, it's just her encountering frightening supernatural events one after the other, not really knowing how to react or what to do. These are nine scary stories that supposedly really happened based on a collection of urban legends from Shin Mimibukuro. And and they are adapted into manga format by Junji Ito. I feel that this is the weakest point of this book. I was not really a fan of a good majority of the stories here. There are a lot of cool ideas presented, like the woman next door. It sort of explored the themes of voyeurism and how our curiosity of strangers can get the better of us. And then you had stuff like the the Scarlet Circle chapter, which was actually pretty horrific, along with the Just the Two of Us, which I believe was the girl who was missing her mother that uh, was no longer alive and the ghost uh, was haunting her, resulting in some very horrific images in the story. Also, I did enjoy the final bonus story in the book called Monster Prop, which I think had the more 
classic urban legend tale of this happened to this character. So now legend says that if you go and do this, blah, 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 it will happen and you'll be haunted. That sort of story beat. I felt this chapter exemplified that. Whereas the others were a little bit too random and I felt like they didn't quite hit the mark when it came to the, the one-two punch of presenting a quirky story and scaring you. I don't know. The art is phenomenal though, as typical with Ito. Fantastic overall, but it's just, again, these stories which didn't really do anything for me uh, aside from torture poor Mimi, who's just trying to study for her exams and now she's uh, seeing all kinds of hauntings and being traumatized by them. All right, so there it is. Three Junji Ito books that I wanted to discuss briefly on the channel. After suffering sort of an Ito burnout, I uh, neglected some of the releases. But if you're interested and you want me to talk about them outside of Spooktober, Halloween month and all that stuff, I will gladly do so because I think I still have around six more books that I've not discussed on this platform. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. I truly do appreciate it. If you've read these books, let me know in the comment section what you thought, and of course, what is your favorite Junji Ito short story? Thank you once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.